Game 8 of the World's Chess Championship. This is the match that keeps on giving. It's been an incredible roller coaster ride so far, and Game 8 continued in exactly the same vein. Remember, scores going into Game 8 4 3 in Jan Nepomnish's favour. So, Dingley Ren with White. What had he got lined up? C4. Now, Nepo likes to play the Grunfeld here. This is, in the past, one of his favourite openings. But instead, today he went for e6. And we have a Nimzo Indian on the board. e3. So, very classical so far from Ding. Castles. And now that the king has committed to the king's side... Instead of one of the more normal orthodox continuations, knight f3 or bishop d3, Ding goes for a3. So we transpose back into the so-called Zamish variation. And this is very sharp because white pushes black into exchanging here. So white has the advantage of the two bishops. But it costs a whole tempo to do that. You know, you waste time in playing a3. But it also means that this knight can move to potentially a more active square on g3. This has actually been a, a favourite variation of, in recent times, of Fabiano Caruana. d6. Knight e2. So there we go. This knight... Heading out to g3, which uh, just covers the e4 square. Knight c6. So with this pawn move, these pawn moves, black is blockading that pawn on c4. So that pawn is potentially a target. You can see no white pawns can actually defend that one. So white needs to hurry up, basically. If white isn't quick, then black is just going to play b6, knight a5, bishop a6, and there's going to be too much pressure on the c4 pawn. So white, to some extent, burns his bridges here. He needs to attack on the king side. And e4 is possible, but actually there's a very sharp counter-attacking move, d5. But instead of that... Ding played rook a2. Now that's a little bit unusual. It has been seen before, but it's a very sharp move. And, and I mean, after this move, it was quite clear that we're going to get an absolutely barnstorming game. This rook can often swing across the board, perhaps into the middle, but as we're going to see, perhaps later on, all the way to h2. Yes, believe it often it makes its way to the h file just see what happens b6 so nepo is carrying out the traditional plan of playing bishop a6 and knight a5 to capture this pawn e4 now that the rook is here actually this d5 move just doesn't have the same effect and this rook actually is well placed Bishop a6, yep, the traditional strategy of attacking this pawn. Bishop g5, well, that pin is potentially nasty for black. If black had a bishop on e7, it just wouldn't be a problem. But you can see that straight away white threatens knight h5, damaging those pawns, perhaps fatally on the king side. So white needs, uh, excuse me, black needs to react straight away. H6. If the bishop steps back, then g5 actually wins a piece. Now, taking here would be a complete failure of white's plan. Just giving back the bishop and black is very solid. So what did Ding do here? Well, quite quickly he played h4, a peace sacrifice. So it's all going on here. I mean, it's it's an extraordinary position. So, so we've got, you know, this attacking gesture on the king side. 
we've got this move rook a2 on the other side of the board. Incidentally, I should mention that when I looked at this with quite a powerful computer, it actually likes rook a2. It thinks it's one of the best moves in the position, which is interesting. So a move which is computer generated. And here black has a couple of decent alternatives. You can open up the position uh, with c takes d4, but Nepo took the bishop straight away. h takes g5, right. Now we see the purpose of giving up the piece. The h file is opened. So this rook on h1 comes into the game and it hasn't had to move. Now, of course, if the knight retreats, then queen h5 is winning on the spot for white. But, of course, that was never Nepo's idea. Very quickly, he played g6. One had the impression that Nepo wasn't entirely surprised by this entire line. He seemed to be playing fairly quickly. So the pawn on g6 covers h5, so that rules out the queen coming to h5. Uh, so Ding took the piece back, and you can see queen h5 not possible here. Oops, not possible in this position. It's covered by the g6 pawn, but also the queen is now covering some important squares on the king side. And so, I mean, to my eyes at this point, I thought, well, Nepo has actually negotiated this tricky opening variation quite well. It seems actually quite solid for black, and there's also pressure here and potentially here as well. But Ding found this move, e5, and I'm sure this was part of his preparation. Pawn takes pawn. And now there's a couple of very interesting possibilities. Ding played d5. You can also play knight e4. This is not so silly. Um, in fact, it often burns out to a draw. I would just, I want to show you one mad line. So just to repeat, this didn't happen, but watch this. Okay, so the queen is attacked. So let's say queen f4 to attack the knight. Bishop d3, defending the knight. Bishop takes, okay, very tricky. Bishop takes bishop, queen takes knight. g3, the queen goes back. And now, get this move. f3, with the idea of swinging that rook all the way across and going for a mating attack, it really does happen. That rook really can come into play. Of course, bishop takes rook, and that prevents that idea. But now watch what happens. Queen d2, that could be mate shortly. Queen takes f3. Queen h6, threatening mate. Okay, black has to give up the queen. And now bishop d5. So it's two rooks against the queen. That threatens mate. So this is a very long forcing line. And after this, bishop takes g6. It's going to end in a draw by perpetual check. I mean, okay, that's the kind of craziness that's going on in this position. Now, I mean, it to, to play those kind of forcing lines is, is very tricky. Of course, that's a computer variation. But I just wanted to give you just an idea of the kind of possibilities that are in the position. In any case, Ding did not play knight e4. Instead, he went for d5. So this introduces another little problem for black, that this is a pass pawn and, well, potentially actually quite dangerous, particularly when it's supported by that rook. And knight e4 is still in the air. Now, there are lots of ways for black to play this. You could exchange here on, on d5, but instead knight e7 by Nepo, d6, that pawn marched on, knight f5, the knight moved, and knight e4, so the knight got to e4 anyway. And be careful, you know, I would quite like to keep the queen here. But watch what happens. G4. That knight is in big trouble. And, well, if it moves, let's say, here, this looks dreadful. G5 and knight f6. And the trap snaps shut. 
So after knight e4, Nepo played the queen back to d8. And, well, white has quite a few tempting possibilities here. g4 is one idea. Um, you can also just swing the rook across to, to support the pawn. But Ding went for queen d3 with a very direct idea of queen h3 just barreling down that h-file. And black's next moves are forced. Queen d3 is a very good move. King g7. So that allows the rook to come across to defend. g4. So that if knight h6, again, this is very powerful. And there's a really nice move here. f4. Once again with the idea of bringing that rook across to attack on the h-file. As well as exchanging or, or taking on e5 and knight f6. I mean, it's incredible how this rook actually manages to get to h2. Okay, that didn't happen. After g4, Nepo played the best move. It's interesting, he was moving quite quickly. Around about this stage, Ding had around 35 minutes left, and Nepo had over an hour. So Ding, there was a bit of time pressure for, for Ding. But he's playing well. Now, if this knight is taken... You can see that there's a pin here, and actually this works out quite well for black. But Ding played an excellent move, rook h3. And now he is threatening to take the knight, knight h4. So blocking the h-file. g5, so cutting off the defence. And here, Nepo made a mistake. He should defend the knight with the rook. And then, well, white has a couple of very intriguing possibilities. There's nothing clear. The computer thinks that it's roughly level, although, I mean, I can't imagine this position ending in a draw. It feels like do or die. Uh, you can play queen g3 here with a continuation like this. Uh, you can also play f4. That, uh, this is my favourite move, actually. I mean, this is completely crazy. Um, but very often it seems to burn out to a draw. Well, but that, those are very computery variations. So, for example, this endgame. Um, this somehow should end in a draw but it but it's completely mad and and you know if you if you had uh, the strongest computer in the world playing the strongest computer probably would end in a draw but with two fallible humans it's another story anyway after g5 nepo did not play rook h8 instead he took on e4 and this is a mistake knight is attacked came back to f5 and here instead of taking this pawn ding simply supported the pawn on d6 with the rook so that rook coming into play so clearly if knight takes pawn then queen e5 check is is winning for white wins the piece now it's possible that Nepo overlooked this. I should say that Nepo now played rook h8. It's possible that he overlooked that in this position, this is actually winning for white. Because here, rook h8 does not defend. And here's why. You can take and take again and d7 and the pawn goes through. It's remarkable, isn't it, how white's king is actually safe in the middle, surrounded by these pieces. I think, I suspect that's what Nepo overlooked, that queen g5 isn't possible. In any case, he thought for some time here, something, he obviously understood something's gone wrong and played rook h8. Ding took. And now he played d7, which is a good move, but there is a winning move here. Rook d3. This wins on the spot. I mean, perhaps not an easy move to find. Again, there's 
kind of poetry that this rook on a2 finds its way to the king side. Rook, a, rook h3 is the problem. So, for example, if rook d8, let's say, rook h3, check. If the king goes back, of course, it's mate on h8. And after f6, well, OK, I think we've seen that one before. And the queen is gone. And there really is no defense here. Uh, for example, f6 can be met by queen b7. The queen switches direction. And that is winning. King goes back and that's gone. So rook d3 was a winning move, but instead Ding played d7 quite quickly. Now, I think this is a kind of hangover from the previous game where he ran very short of time and just couldn't find the right move. So he was just moving quite quickly here, which is sort of an understandable reaction. And d7 does look very attractive for white. But it's not that clear now. Rook d8. Queen e5 check. King h7. Clock times. At this moment, Ding had 25 minutes remaining for 13 moves to get to the time control. And Nepo had 29 minutes. So they certainly Ding had sort of caught up over the last five moves or so, playing quite quickly. Queen h2 check. Now Ding repeated the position a couple of times. Remember, repeat it three times and it's a draw. But he was just gaining a bit of time on the clock. And now queen c7. So Ding hasn't selected, you know, the, the decisive continuation with rook d3. Nevertheless, what he's done is sound, and he still has a very promising position. And here, well, Nepo was still rattling the moves out. It's quite incredible. I think he appreciated that if he waits passively with, say, queen f8, then in the long run, this is very difficult because... Yeah, I mean, this rook is stuck here, the queen is stuck. So, for example, here's a nice continuation. You could just bring the king to safety. And, I mean, there's even the thought that it's going to come up here, but just taking here and then perhaps taking here. And it does look very, very promising for white. Uh, or indeed, taking on a7 straight away. You could do this too. This simplification also looks very promising for white. White is actually two pawns up there. Um, that might be a bit trickier, um, but still looks pretty good. But Nepo, so interesting. He said afterwards, this was a bluff. Queen h4. But Ding bottled it. He could have taken the rook. He didn't do this. He, he moved very quickly. Instead of doing this, he actually played king d1. So, what about queen takes rook? Reminds me a bit of the previous game, actually, but Ding was spooked. He didn't want to get into massive complications, massive calculation, but he could have gone for this. It's actually not a perpetual check. Now, it's a narrow path for the king, but the king does make it like this. Well, if the king, if the, if the queen checks like this, the king makes it around to the other side of the board. Or knight d6 looks a bit scary, but no. After this check, you pick up the knight, and that's winning. Or an alternative in this position, queen d1 check. And the king goes up the board. I mean, this is scary. But in fact, white is winning this. I mean, <laughs> check. I mean, it looks like there could be mate in one here for black. But actually, after this, the king escapes. But you need time to calculate that. And... You know, if you discover that in your calculations after uh, looking at queen takes rook that, in fact, 
it is a draw, then you've just wasted loads of time. So Ding just took a practical decision, and instead of taking a rook, he played king d1, just bringing the king to safety. But now it is very tricky. Taking that pawn has definitely improved black's situation. And in fact, in this position, Nepo already has a very strong move. He played e5, which puts Ding back in the game, gives Ding winning chances. In fact, after knight d4 check, this is absolutely fine for black. And the point is this, after queen f4, in fact, after pawn takes, it looks like white still has a very promising position with this extra piece. But black can swipe a third pawn. That's the trick, because if rook takes rook, queen a4 check picks up the rook. Now, this is going to end in a draw. Uh, but that is definitely the cleanest way for black to play. But Nepo played e5, and now Ding is... A has good winning chances again. So this pushes the knight to a worse square. And now he took on a7. So, I mean, this is still a real problem for black with this rook and queen to some extent tied to defending. Knight g4, but Nepo spins round and is finding counterplay. Here, Ding made another mistake. He could, for example, play king b3. So I quite like this, that the king is just safer here. And if Nepo goes for this, in fact, the king is very well placed to attack. Now, the, these pawns are quite impressive. It's certainly not an easy one. But white should have a promising position there. Once these pawns go, the king can even come back to try to defend. Looks good for white. I mean, that's just one possible continuation. Another continuation, maybe bishop c6 to defend the pawn and then to take here. But instead, Ding played bishop f3. This was just played too quickly. Again, it was that kind of hangover from the other day where you know he was conscious of not running too short of time. What he wants to do is force the knight back and then protect that pawn and then well you know the things are safer and then he can try and make progress. But he'd overlooked knight takes pawn on f2. Black could take here, but even stronger is e4 to shut that bishop out of play. And in fact, white has to be very careful here. Ding still had two moves to make, and he went right down to the wire. Um, but he found a good continuation. Rook e2, pinning. That has to be defended. And with just four seconds left, he played queen takes b6. That's the 40th move. So he reached the time control, and actually the position is fairly safe. I mean, there are several ways for white to just kind of calm things down. It's, I mean, it's too late to play for a win here. And these pawns are quite dangerous. This bishop is locked out of play. Um, Ding went for queen b8. Good move. So there's potential in some moments to play rook here and some kind of attack. But the queen also looks back in this direction. I mean, it's possible just to play rook b7 here. Um, and the game could end in a draw like that. But Nepo went for a very forcing move, queen d6. So threatening to check down here, threatening to take here. And so that obviously forces a queen exchange. And now ding simplified. So it's rook and three against rook and two. However, there's potential for that pawn to run down the board. But actually, Ding played rook e8, and after this move, the players agreed to a draw. Um, well, before I look back very quickly and just kind of sum up, so why is this a draw? Um, I mean, it, 
there are various ideas, but okay, g5, uh, obviously white has to take care of this, and you can do this in a couple of ways. But let's have a look. For example, a4. Okay, let's create some counterplay. Somebody said passborn should be pushed. g4, a5. Now, if that pawn is pushed again, then rook g8. That picks this one up. So let's say rook a6. Okay, now white's king can come over. Rook here. King e4 with the king in the game. This is no longer dangerous. King d5, that can even counterattack here. And, well, I mean, it, okay, I, I'm being, this is a slightly cooperative variation, but you can see this one is going to end in a draw. Um, both rooks defending and, yeah, the king will support that pawn down here. This king will support the c-pawn and will end up with king against king. They could have played on, but um, it's definitely a drawn position. Well, what's another extraordinary fight? Uh, I mean, I liked it that, well, first of all, Ding played this really combative variation with this move rook a2. But Nepo also didn't back down. You know, he doesn't have to play the Nimzo as black. He could play a solid Queen's Gamut, I, I don't know. Or, or And there are also, you know, other variations that black can play of this. But, you know, he said after the game, in, you know, I wanted to play the principled variations with black, and he felt that black was okay. Black is okay. But, oh boy, it is so tricky. Um, Ding said, you know, this is... Obviously, preparation, there are very long lines, they're very deep. He said, this was my cannonball variation, he called it. And it is it is a bit like a, a cannonball. They're, they're barreling down the H-file. Um, some beautiful ideas in there. And it's a pity for Ding that his idea of Rook A2 and the rest wasn't quite crowned with success. But there you go. That's game eight. This match continues to thrill. Nepo still leading by a point, but we've still got six games to go. We're a very long way from this match being over. We're going to see lots of twists and turns. Stick around. Thanks for watching.